winter has come. And it has brought with it some wonderful visitors who've left their permafrosted homes thousands of miles away just to thaw in the winter warmth of Karnataka. Time now for us to meet the tourist who's made this epic trip. The bar-headed goose. A very accomplished visitor who people claim and we have no reason to disbelieve. It's one of the world's highest flying birds. She and her friends fly every winter over mountains great and small as they arrive from Russia, Central Asia and Mongolia. It's rumored they even fly over Mount Everest, though we don't know who actually saw that, to be honest. Each leg of her flight has lasted as long as 17 hours with no jet engine, no aviation fuel and thank God for small mercies, no airline food. They come in their thousands every October or early November. And the moment they arrive, they don't head to their rooms like good boys and girls, but straight to the pool for a rowdy, refreshing swim. We understand and would do the same after such a trip. After a long dip and a bath, it's time to find their roosts. There's much pecking and shoving. Latecomers and freshers are ragged and bullied just like at boarding school. But soon, the pecking order is settled, and so are the birds. And after a good scrub down, they do what any self-respecting tourist would on the first day of a holiday, sleep, and how they do it. They remain standing on one leg and sleep with their necks turned back While they snooze, life goes on. The clever Egret puts on a fishing masterclass. He agitates the mud with his feet, forcing the fish to reveal their position. But sometimes you can be too clever by half. The kingfisher chuckles. In the end though, persistence pays and dinner is served. As the heat eases up, the geese wake up. They are social and garrulous, and in a group, honk happily at full volume, reminding you of peak hour traffic in Bangalore. However, their loud honking is also a survival tool to warn of airborne threats or land-based predators. It's now late evening. The farmers have left their fields, and that is a signal for our bar-headed friends to head to, well, the bar. Except that they are teetotalers and virtuous vegetarians. But then, Karnataka is a destination that offers a fine selection of gourmet vegetarian. Over weeks, this becomes a routine of sorts and the birds' lives are linked to the farmers. They feed in the early hours just before the farmers arrive and feed again late evenings after they depart. Speaking of departures, it's now mid-March. Time to calibrate their inbuilt GPS systems and prepare for the return journey. One fraught with peril in the world's highest ascending climbs. A journey they will gladly make again when the thirst for Indian hospitality strikes once more next year. <laughs> <laughs>